Congratulations. What does this mean to you, getting this honor with these honorees? I, I can't, you know, look, I'm in the same room with Norman Lear and Quincy Jones. It, it means a lot. I'm, I'm flattered. I'm honored. I'm blessed. I'm, my life is covered with grace. It's a lot going on right now. Let's first address the Oscars. What are your thoughts on uh, the boycott that people are asking people to do and, and I, they're calling, I guess, the whiteout of the Oscars? I respect the boycott. I think they have a valid point. I think it's something that we have to pay attention to. Look, you know, people don't want to be work and never be recognized. You know, so what? You gave one to Halley and you gave one to Denzel. People still want to be recognized. I mean, nobody? I mean, that's really, really weird. You look at the films and you come away with nobody? That's, that's kind of crazy. I disagree with the calling of Chris Rock not to host it. I totally disagree with that. Uh, I just totally disagree with that. You can't dump that on him. You can't dump that on him. And I think that night, I think we need Chris Rock. Chris Rock <laughs> is going to say something that night. Walk me through your mind, Miss Universe pageant. You're walking backstage, you think everything's done. What happened? I mean, you mean after it would happen? Well, before, after you announced the winner and then walked after back, the I first winner. After I announced the winner, I walked back. Nobody said nothing. They set me up with Rosalind Sanchez to do the clothes. Mm. Nobody was even aware something was wrong. But I saw him back there scrambling, and then I had a bug in my ear which told me what to say. And I had a teleprompter that I read what to say. Now, uh, okay. There was some more information on the card that we didn't rehearse or practice ever in three days, but I made the mistake, I said it. So the guy in my ear is saying, we gotta fix this, we gotta fix this. But nobody, nobody said how to fix it. Nobody gave one suggestion. Nobody came out there and said, Steve, we'll go out here, we'll do it together. I love you, put your arms around me. No, so I walked out there on my own. Nobody told me how to fix it. I went out there and it was all on me. I took it, I made the mistake, I said it, I owned it. But I felt horrible for Miss Columbia, man. And until I had her on my show, How was that? I didn't do interviews about it. Because it was wonderful, man. She was so pleasant. Such a sweet woman, man. It really, and she took a load off of me, man, by just forgiving me. That was very helpful for me. I heard that there were actual death threats sent to your family, which is oh, not cool and man. not funny. I had death threats, paparazzi outside the house, people hanging on my gate. You know, I had to beef up security, but you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's only a couple of people. The paparazzi just wanted pictures. They're doing their job. I got it. The death threats, very uncool. You know, what, 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 what my family got to do with this? But it all washed over, man. And I think at the end of the day, the real people who get it, the business people, the true friends, they get it. We laughed about it. And a, a lot of things are happening. So you might look up on Super Bowl. I might be in a Super Bowl commercial something to do with it <laughs> bruh i'm giving you a scoop bro i love that you might see steve harvey in the super bowl commercial i'm not saying who it is but it could uh -oh. go down it could possibly and i gave it to you bro i thank you i, I thank you for i i'm ready for that